God's house. We pray the Lord's blessings on our worship service this morning. Today we are celebrating the fifth Sunday in Lent with the Office of Matins. So we invite the congregation to join us for our opening hymn number 490, Jesus Lives the Victory Won. Confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, 
We confess that we are by our nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you. And for his sake, he forgives you all your sins. So as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. The Old Testament reading for the fifth Sunday of Lent comes from the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and he set me down in the middle of the valley that was full of bones, and he led me around among them. And behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and you will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and, I, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattle, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath. Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds of breath, and breathe on these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves. O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. Lord God, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. In the epistle of the book of Romans, 8th chapter. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not in the flesh, but who walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit Set their minds on things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead, 
because it's hidden. The spirit is light because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal, mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. The Lord have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. Please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory <coughs> to you, O Lord. Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who had anointed the Lord with oil ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent to Jesus, saying, Lord, he, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death, for it is the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and you're going to go there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But anyone who walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to the Lord, said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus has spoken of his death, but they thought he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he dies, yet he shall live. And whoever... Everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. And the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary rise quickly and go out, and they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? She said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could he, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. 
But Jesus said to them, said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus lifted up her eye, his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you have sent me. When he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips and his face wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. God. We now continue by confessing our common Christian faith in the singing of the Te Deum. <laughs>
what it does. Come on in. Now, if you were paying attention, the, the readings that we heard today were kind of a little sad. And the reason they were sad is because if that Old Testament lesson about the valley of the skeletons who ended up coming to life, and then the gospel reading when Jesus' good friend died, but Jesus rose him from the dead. Both of those involve death. And when we go through Lent and we're talking about all of this sin that we talk about in Lent, well, that's the biggest problem of all the things sin does to us. It's bad. The biggest problem is death. And so on one hand, hearing these messages in Lent is sad because who wants to think about a whole bunch of skeletons or everybody being sad because their dear friend died. But look at the message that it says. Look at what happened to all those skeletons in Ezekiel. What happened is Ezekiel, who was a prophet, he was a pastor in the Old Testament days, God told Ezekiel to go tell the people about the gospel of the coming Savior. And when he did that, all of the skeletons came back to life. And so that tells us that God's word gives us life. Even though sin makes us very sick, God's word gives us life and makes us better. Well, then you look at the gospel lesson from John. Well, it was specifically Jesus that rose this man Lazarus from the dead. So that means that everything in God's word that gives us life, it's all about Jesus. Jesus is who ultimately makes sure that we have eternal life in heaven. Because Jesus gives us his word, which keeps our faith strong. And Jesus died for our sins so that we would be forgiven and we could go to heaven. So we should say thank you for all that Jesus has done. So let's go ahead and say a word of thanksgiving. A prayer of thanksgiving. Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for sending Jesus. To pay for all my sin. And help me to always remember. That sin is going to cause me hurt. But Jesus will always give me life. Because he loves me. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you guys so very much.
grace, mercy, and peace to all of you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The lesson for meditation this morning is the epistle lesson read a moment ago from Romans 8. And our sermon theme today is entitled, A New World Order. Dear friends and beloved brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, Good versus evil. That battle has been going on as long as we can remember. Good versus evil shows itself in everything from war to storylines and movies and TV shows to music to pop culture and even professional wrestling. There are endless examples of this that we can look at, but in all of them, they have one thing in common, and that is evil is trying to take over and destroy goodness. Evil is trying to create a new world order. Well, good versus evil is a reality in our daily lives, but when it comes to us spiritually, things are actually backwards. In entertainment, we have goodness in place, and evil is trying to make a change. But with respect to us and our sinful nature, goodness is not the prevailing reality. Instead, by nature, we are sinful. By our nature, we reject God and his word, so we reject his goodness. We have a reality of evil by nature that needs an invasion of goodness. We need to be saved from sin and death. We need a new world order. Thankfully, God is a gracious and loving God, so he's paved the way to heaven for us. He sent us his son Jesus, who took on human flesh and became one of us, but he was without sin. Jesus lived the sinless life that God demands of us in our stead, and then Jesus died a death of punishment on our behalf. This word of gospel truth is then proclaimed to the world, and it converts hearts, and it creates faith. And that's a gift from God. All of God's children receive the Holy Spirit in baptism, and those with the Holy Spirit leave this earth in physical death, but they will be raised to live eternally in the unending bliss of the kingdom of heaven. Our sinful nature needed a change, and we got it. God brought about this change because of his love for us. No longer are we doomed to death, but a change has been brought about by Jesus. Our faith in Jesus makes us God's children. We've been given godly holiness, and that old sinful nature of ours has been drowned in the waters of baptism. We've been saved from our evil nature and given a new world order in Jesus, so now we have a new life in the Spirit. And this new life in the Spirit is what St. Paul is telling us about today in the Epistle lesson from Romans 8. Our new life in Christ is a tremendous blessing to us from our great and loving God, and our text today shows us this wonderful truth. God wants us to know about our new life, and so he addresses every question that we could have about it. For instance, we might ask the question, what benefits does this new life give us? Well, you see this in verses 1 and 2. Paul says, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. So our old life in the flesh would have led us to eternal condemnation because that in actuality is what we deserve. But we've been given a new life, a new world order in Jesus because Jesus took our punishment, Jesus paid for all of our sinfulness, and we're set free from the law's condemnation because of that. Our 
our salvation is a wonderful blessing of our new life in the Spirit. Now, why was this change necessary in the first place? God answers that one for us in verse 3. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. So the law couldn't save us because of our sinful nature. We can't keep it. So instead of expecting us to be perfect and holy, God sent Jesus to keep the law for us. It said he sent Jesus in the likeness of sinful flesh so that he could legitimately take our place. Jesus was one of us, but unlike us, he wasn't of sin. So now we have the Holy Spirit who leads us to walk in the spirit of Jesus instead of walking by, by our sinful nature. So we walked in the gift of our new life in the spirit. All right, but is there really a difference in our new life in the spirit versus our old life in the flesh? Well, for that, look at verses 5 and 6. For those who live according to the flesh set their mind on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. So as, as God's children, the Spirit leads us to set our minds on the things of God. The Spirit leads us to want to please God. And when we fail to do so, the Spirit leads us to repent and to be forgiven. In the Spirit, our minds are set on the things of God, so our mind is set on life and peace. That's a drastic change. From the mind of the flesh, which is set on things of sin, which leads to death. Our sin has so corrupted us that it affects even what we think. According to our sinful nature, we want to live life on our own terms. And that's always going to be in contradiction to God's law. Persisting in the flesh would have yielded a future of hopelessness and death. God's new world order in Christ Jesus saved us from all of that. But the nagging question that keeps coming up with respect to our new life in the Spirit is the doubt that continues to creep in because of our sinful nature. Our sinfulness has been paid for and forgiven, but this side of heaven, our sinful nature will still rear its ugly head from time to time. The battle within us still rages on. We are still of a sinful nature, but we have been saved by the blood of the Jesus, the blood of Jesus, and walk in the Spirit. So that's our present reality of being a sinner saint. We're destined for sainthood, so we look forward to the blessings of heaven where there is no sin. But in this earthly life of ours, we still have our struggles against the flesh. Paul talked about this in verse 10. He said, if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. So the Holy Spirit guides you into God's truth, proclaims that Jesus is Lord, and enables us to see sin and to flee from it. But the sinful flesh still will not let us achieve godly perfection and holiness in this life. But when we sin, God forgives. This is the blessing of our new life in the Spirit. This is God's new world order. Good versus evil. We see it in all those realms of entertainment in our lives. We've seen it in our history. And we see it in God's Word. Good versus evil. Grace versus sin. The spirit versus the flesh. Jesus versus Satan. Light versus death. Light versus darkness. 
We were in a world of darkness where evil abounded and sin, death, and Satan ruled, so something had to change. We needed a Savior. And God gave us a Savior. And not just any old run-of-the-mill Savior, mind you. He sent us the very, very best. The great battle of God versus Satan had to be fought. And it was fought on the cross of Golgotha. Try as Satan might, he could not tempt Jesus to sin. He could not keep Jesus from going to the cross holy and innocent. He was powerless to keep Jesus from winning. On Good Friday, Jesus won. Jesus destroyed sin and Satan. So God's word of wet and encouragement for you this morning is that though sin and evil reigns over our human nature, Jesus created a new world order by defeating sin, Satan, and death on the cross and by the empty tomb giving us a new life in the spirit and setting us free from the death of the flesh. You have been changed. You have been saved. So go in peace in the spirit of God and rejoice that Jesus is Lord. Thanks be to God. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until his second coming. Amen. We rise for our prayer hymn, number 940, Holy God, we praise thy name.
And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commit myself, my body and soul, and all things. And let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings being ordered by your governance would be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please be seated for our dismissal hymn number 440, Jesus, I Will Ponder Now.
of you for joining us, both those of you who are here in person and those watching on the internet. We pray that hearing God's word of mercy and forgiveness will be a lamp to your feet and your life to your path as you go about the rest of this week. Um, we would like to invite everyone into Parish Hall immediately following dismissal for our period of fellowship where we can hang out and talk with each other. Refreshments will be served and we pray that you can stay for that. Following um, uh, fellowship time, there will be a Sunday school in the, well not Sunday school, but uh, the children will be, um, will be looked over as in the sanctuary will be one of our periodic uh, voters assemblies that we will have. So if you're a member of the voting assembly, please stay for that. And we would encourage all of our members to become members of the voting assembly so that your thoughts and your feedback could mold uh, the direction of our ministry. We do have a slightly modified schedule this week because school is in spring break this coming week. Therefore, on um, on Wednesday, there will be no in-person adult Bible study Wednesday morning. There will be no chapel service Wednesday morning. And the Bible study Wednesday evening, we will have an on online content for you, but it will be a rebroadcast. And then we invite you to come back to us uh, next Sunday, which is Palm Sunday beginning Holy Week. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? I hope I don't miss losing any of those from the voters meeting by saying that's a veggie tales video we're going to have running back there. Um, a couple of reminders for you. Uh, today is the official end of our commitment period. So if you've not made your commitment as a member of what your financial support is uh, coming fiscal year, which runs from July 1st, 23 to June 30th, um, 24, I invite you to please still do so today. Um, you've received emails, you've received bulletin inserts, um, and you can also find it on the front page of Trinity's website um, below the giving section. You just click on that, it'll take you right to what we need to know. It is confidential, uh, the names are only attached so we don't count you two, three, or four times. Um, also, I'm really, really excited because we're in Lent, and that means what's coming? Easter. And for the first time in, is it four years, Pastor? Yep. We're going to be having Easter breakfast between the 7 a.m. sunrise service and the 10 p.m. Easter celebration. Did I say p.m.? A.m. Well, Sundays are long, but not that long. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so Easter breakfast is on plan. Uh, we'll be serving a hot breakfast. But we need some hands on deck. Um, there's a sign-up sheet that went out online. There's also a physical one right in back in the parish hall, and there's also one in the uh, in the office. Schools and the office close this week, but if you don't make your decision till next week, you should sign up there as well. And one more thing, you found this weird little slip of paper in your bulletins today. A um, couple of late-breaking opportunities. Well, one is late-breaking. Old National Bank is offering a chance to help your favorite charity win $5,000. Now, it only goes to this Friday, but you can vote from as many email addresses as you have once a day between now and Friday. So I'm good for seven. I don't know about you. But uh, um, anyway, the easiest way to do it, you just fill in your email address. You mark that you're 18 or over and that you agree um, to abide by the rules. And then I printed Trinity's EIN number for you because there are so many Trinities that if you try to write it out, you'll never get there. So that is also online on both the um, church website um, and then school portal as well. And also, if you are a private member, Friday is the last day to dedicate your private dollars. I know a lot of you already have. Thank you. But if you're a private member, um, instead of giving dividends, they allow you to say, where should we put this money that we earn? And uh, of course, Trinity Luther Church and Trinity Luther School are both on the list. Thank you very much. God bless you day. All right, any other announcements? Seeing none, I pray God's richest blessings in Christ Jesus upon all of you. I invite all of you into Parish Hall for fellowship, and then I invite you all to stay for uh, the voters' assembly. 
And then, uh, other than that, we will see you next Sunday. May the Lord richly bless your day. Thank you.